Hey guys, and welcome to episode one of this FIFA 22 career mode. If you're a long time subscriber of the channel, thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for still being here supporting the vids. If you're new, why not hit that subscribe button, drop along for the ride with us. We, of course, will be starting, as you've seen by the title of the video and the thumbnail, it's probably the reason that you're here, with Aston Villa. Lots to be excited about, proper historic English club, proper fan base, proper stadium, former European champions as well in 1982 beating Bayern in the final who would have thought that Villa and you can see domestic success priority is low continental success is low financial is low so not great expectations with Villa either they've had a very eventful summer with obviously Jack Grealish completing a big money move to Manchester City but where I'm excited about Villa is that I think they've recruited really well they've done some great business Leon Bailey coming in Danny Ings coming in who else coming Emi Buendia coming in so I'm really excited about the squad that we've got to uh, to use here. I've got a transfer budget of $48 million. I'm going to switch that over to pounds because that's obviously the settings that we're going to be using. But yeah, very excited to get started. I won't give you the whole career, career mode spiel. You guys know how career modes work. So let's just jump straight in and meet the team. One thing that I should also mention at the beginning of this series is that I will plan on doing these episodes live on Twitch. So if you want to come and see me play live, I will then chop the stream up and then put it on YouTube. So not every day, but some of them will be done live on Twitch. So make sure you're following. Link down below. Showing you the settings. Ultimate. I'm going straight in. Let's see how tough it is. I like a good challenge. We might have to drop that down to legendary, but I'd rather start on ultimate and give that a go than start tweaking sliders in the very first episode. So we'll see how that goes. Five minute halves. Sterling. Yes, we're in pounds. European competitions enabled. That is our goal. Get European football back to Villa Park and trophies as well. Get some trophies back. Financial takeover. Nope. Negotiation strictness strict i think that's realistic we're going to make it as difficult as possible to negotiate for players no international job offers i'm not interested in that in this particular career mode and transfer window disabled for a couple of reasons first of all i want to get your feedback i want your comments your suggestions your tweets everything on the sign-ins that you want me to bring to villa park so that enables me to do that if i enable it straight away i've got to go into episode one start signing players without your input and i want you to be part of this journey also Teams, like they are in real life, are going to have to play the first half of the season up to the January transfer window with the current squads as they are. So it adds that element of realism as well. Wave to the fans. Look at me. That is a dapper outfit. Far more dapper than what I'm wearing right now. But yeah, Whitehead on the back of the shirt. My name's obviously Kieran Whitehead. For those of you that don't know, feel free to follow me on Twitter and socials and all that. But as always, those of you will know what I do here. I always just go for the tournament with the most prize money. We're not going to be playing the friendlies. I'm going to be jumping straight into league action in this very episode. Here we go. Just looking at the objectives then. Let's have a look at the way. They want me to reduce the player wages, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. That could just be selling a player, right? And we'll achieve that. Sign four players in the youth academy. Within two seasons, sign one youth player to the senior team. Play them in 10 matches, either as a starting 11 or coming on as a sub. That's a long-term goal. They want to get a streak of five clean sheets in home matches. A streak. That seems to be difficult, man. And that's high priority for brand exposure. And they want us to sign one young player. That's fine. No continental objectives, of course. But they want us to finish in the Europa League spot. I mentioned earlier, bringing European football back to Villa Park is one of the goals. And I'm happy to try and achieve that. Reach the last 16 of the FA Cup. That seems reasonable. That seems achievable. And again, financial goal to reduce the wage bill. Just get someone off the books. So taking a look at the squad that's going to get us and navigate us through this season. I like it because we've got some versatile players in here, which means we've got a number of different formations we can play. 4-3-3, 5-3-2, 4-2-3-1. We've got the players to do all of it. But I think I'm going to opt with a 4-3-3 to, uh, to start with because Watford on the opening day, even though they had a rough time in real life, we go into that game as the better squad on paper. So I want to take the game to them but we will be switching it up key players i think leon bailey if he can stay injury free he's been plagued by injuries a little bit but great cameo in the game the other day for aston villa we've got danny ings proven premier league goal scorer we've got emmy emmy buendia who was a standout player in norwich's promotion season we've got the ever reliable john mcginn douglas louise and young jacob ramsey going to be focusing a lot on his development by the way i like him a lot matty target left back mings the skipper big man mounting of a center back we've got Ezri concer as well and matty cash so starting 11 strong squad depth decent good options on the bench as well ollie watkins bertrand traore we've got el ghazi we've got nakamba ashley young of course making a return to villa park where he sort of burst onto the scene i think he played for watford as well and we've got Twan Zabi, Twan Zabi on loan from Manchester United, forgive my pronunciations, and Jed Steer as a backup keeper. 
Obviously got Davis as well as a big physical presence, but needs a bit of work, needs a bit of development. As you can see, only 69 rated. So where do I think we need to improve? Well, really, I think if we're gonna take this squad to the next level, obviously got some youngsters down here as well. I think a world-class central midfielder to play alongside McGinn and Douglas Louise while we get Ramsey up to speed and develop on him. A world-class central midfielder and possibly, possibly, another decent center half because if anything happens to Mings and Konsa yeah we've got Tanzavi to come in there but after that it gets it gets a little bit bare it gets a little bit bare so not going to be offloading anyone yet we're going to give all the players a chance to impress but that's probably the team that I'll go into the opening game with depending on pre-season of course we've got a few players out on loan as most Premier League clubs do no one really to take note of probably Wesley being the most high profile of those players a backup striker not sure what I think about him. He's on loan at Club Bruges. Will we sell him when he comes back? I don't know. I don't know. We've obviously got Wright out on loan at Salford City as well. But I think Ollie Watkins, even though he can play wide on the left, I think we will use him as a striker, maybe to play up front with Ings or when Ings needs a rest. But the age of the squad is good. I'm happy with the depth. We'll see how we go. Now, development plans. Tyrone Mings. We're going to work on his acceleration because his sprint speed is good. It just takes him 20 minutes to get to top speed. But if we put him on a stopper development plan, only going to take eight weeks. And obviously, it improves his physical as well as his defensive work rate. So stick him on that. With Matty Cash, I'm going to put him in an attacking wide back development plan. We'll take 18 weeks. Scored a banging goal the other day. But what I want him to do is get forward at pace, use him as a bit of a wing back and improve his passing and his crossing to create more opportunities. Now with Douglas Louise, we're going to use him primarily as a CDM. So I'm going to put him on a ball winning midfielder training plan, improves all the defensive and physical attributes that a good midfielder needs. El Ghazi, not quick for a wide player. So we're going to put him on a support midfielder. You might be thinking, well, he's not going to be a support midfielder. Yeah, but we need his acceleration to boost it a little bit. Long passing is not going to be a danger either. I like El Ghazi, he's an effective player when he plays. Gets on the score sheet quite a bit. So keep an eye on him now Jacob Ramsey I want to turn him into a goal scoring midfielder a real number 10 that can play behind the striker so advanced playmaker is the plan for him get all those passing stats that attacking positioning up it's only going to take seven weeks because he's got a lot of the attributes already get that weak foot boosted he can be a real menace Emi Buendia again sprint speed acceleration need a bit of work he's only 24 crossing could do with improvement as well so support midfielder is the plan for him where is Ollie Watkins Oh, look at the pace on Leon Bailey, man. Look at the pace. The only thing that needs to improve is his passing and his crossing. So wide midfielder, definitely the plan for him. Keenan Davis, what are we going to put him on? Target man. I actually want him to be a bit quicker. So if I put him on poacher, everything strikers need to be good. He's going to go up. Sprint speed a lot, finishing, shot power, penalties, volleys, all of that good stuff. So that's what he's going on. Where is Ollie Watkins? Now... I know Brentford, before Villa signed him, utilised him in that left wing position. So let's have a look what happens here. His acceleration will get a boost. Crossing will get a boost. It's going to take him 24 week, 23 weeks sorry, to learn it. Unless he's in good form and it'll be quicker. Let's put him on that plan there. And then Danny Ings. Look, I know he's 28 and he's probably past his feet. Look, there's nothing we can do to train him. He's finished according to FIFA. He's going to prove you all wrong. Now, doing all the training drills, because obviously if we play them and get a good rating, which I'm not going to if I keep defending like that, doing them and getting a good rating means when we sim them, the players will get maximum benefit out of that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I won't show you it all, though, because we want games, don't we? That's why we're here. We want to get this season underway or make some signings, which I can't do this window because I want your suggestions first. So down in the comments right now, follow my socials. Let me know who you want us to sign or at least add to the shortlist. So first friendly, this is obviously a good opportunity to, to get some dollar in the transfer. I'm not going to play him though. We're going to quick sim these. This is the lineup, like I said, that I'd start against Watford currently. Let's see how it fares against Wolfsburg because if we get absolutely ruined, 2-2 two, two draw. Okay, that's not the worst. Mings and Buendia getting on the score sheet. Okay, not bad, not bad. Taking a look into the Youth Academy, just to see if there's anyone to keep an eye on. And at the moment, Vicente Lozano, all right, 48 rated at the moment. Five-star weak foot, it's great for a goalkeeper, isn't it? He's 15 years old though. 15 years old. I'm going to stick him on a development plan. It's probably the only one really that we need to be keeping our eye on at the moment. Most obvious one, put him on a goalkeeper plan. Diving and reflexes, that's what's important to me. 
All right, second friendly now, Hatafe away. Switch the formation about, switch the personnel about a bit. It's a chance for these boys to show that they deserve a place in the team. How did they get on in the second game? After drawing the first, we've drawn the second too. Wow, we had more possession, more shots, more chances, but didn't get the dub. One of the cool new features as well, you don't need to be interrupted every training day now. You can bypass it and continuing will simulate the sessions with the best grade available. So once you've done all the drills, just bypass it. Final friend friendly now, Hertha Berlin, bit of a kick clash, but it doesn't matter because we're going to quick sim it. 4-2-3-1, let's see with a strong team and a change of formation what we can do And Bertrand Traore, 15 minutes from time, gets the goal that puts us through to the semi-final. Well done, boys. Possession dominating as well. We we battered them, really. All right, semi-final. Trying that formation again against tougher opposition. Fiorentina, the squad is still strong. We're playing Watkins wide on the left. And we've got the dub. Jacob Ramsey with the goal, as well as John McGinn, three minutes in. Love to see it. We're in the final. Two and a half mil in the bank as well. It's time to add to that figure as well. So if we beat Wolfsburg here, we'll get more dollar. Reverting back to a 4-3-3, even though the 4-2-3-1 seems to be working well. Just want to have a look at this formation. We've gone with a strong lineup. Can we get the dub? No, we lost on penalties. That sucks, man. That absolutely sucks. Who scored the goal for us? Come on, where are we? Danny Ings. Of course he did. I'm expecting a lot of goals from him. To be fair, game was very even. Right, it's time. It's time for that opening league game to show what we're all about. I love my outfit, by the way. Villapan have been enjoying what they've seen from the team in pre-season. Can they expect more of the same? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to deliver. Happy with what I've got as a talented group of players. Let's get the morale higher. Let's get everybody buzzing. And we have been working hard. In training, especially. Off camera. I'll be doing all the drills, man. Can the team make it to the Europa League? Yeah, I think we can. First season, off the bat. Depending on... Uh, depending on how we find ultimate difficulty. That's what I will say. So guys, this is it. Vicarage Road, the venue. Really, really keen to get off to a good start. I think it sets the tone for the season. Not gonna be easy though. Watford have been decent since coming back up. And this game looks so good on next gen. Come on Tyrone, mate, lead us to victory. Let me show you the starting 11. Everybody wants to play in the season opener. I'm going to show you the starting lineups like this for now because the animations can still be a bit of a copyright infringement thing. But Ben Foster, you can see in goal, 4-1-4-1 for Watford. That's quite defensive for a home side, but that's the man that we need to watch out for. Saar, he is lethal on his day. This is what I've gone for. It's a 4-3-3. I'm not quite sure why Douglas Louise is sat quite so deep on that diagram, but Martinez, cash, concept means target, Douglas Louise, McGinn, Jacob Ramsey, interested to see what he brings to the table. Bertrand Traore, probably the surprise starter. I thought he grabbed a couple of goals in pre-season, didn't he? And he's been training well in the drills. So he starts over Buendia, who drops to the bench. Ings up front, Bailey on the left. High hopes for this man. Player of the year predictor, I think. He will get it. Boys, go out, get the job done. Of course, we've got the new single player camera for FIFA 22. I'm gonna start with it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I usually play on telebroadcast. But we'll give this new camera a go. It does look decent. Obviously, we're playing on ultimate difficulty still, so I feel like we're going to have to work for absolutely everything. If it's way too tough, I'll turn it down. Let me know your thoughts on that too. Watford come forward early doors. My goodness. Defending could be a struggle. Oh, what a block. Still not clear. Well played. Tyro Mings couldn't prevent the corner though. Corner. Out swinger. Should be dealt with. Isn't dealt with. Header comes in. First shot on target. It's a header on target. But Martinez equal to it. Go on, Traore. Pocket of space. Go on, Traore. Square it. Square it we have. Going to go out wide. Matty Cash. We've got no one in the mixer, though. Need someone in the box. Danny Ings not the tallest. Found a way to McGinn. McGinn might let fly. McGinn does let fly. Oh, my goodness me. Right in front of those travelling fans. And our first goal of the season is scored by John McGinn. And they just backed off Watford. Look, no one closing him down. Ings occupying defenders. And McGinn said, OK, thank you very much. I'll smash one into the roof of the net. It's a dream start. Ben Foster got a hand to it, actually, but the power beats him. Well, I wasn't expecting a start like that, I'll be honest. But we'll take it. Let's just uh, ultra defensive, lads. Hold on. Waste time. Do whatever you need to do to escape here with three points. Watford immediately back on the front foot, though. Defending needs doing here. Done well. Got a foot in. Done enough. 
This game is so open for the first game of the season. Normally, they're quite cagey affairs. What for coming forward? Cash gets a little toe to it. Oh, my word. Look how dangerous they look. Here's Ramsey, though. Look at the space we've got in midfield, by the way. Shouldn't have. I know we've got three central midfielders, but they're playing a 4-1-4-1. And that is a great ball. Cash in a world of space. Traore making a run. Touch. Finish. Bertram Traore. It's two. You can hear what the home fans think of that. It's an unbelievable start. What a goal. Again, brilliantly done. Matty Cash down this side. Causing all sorts of problems. And Traore, we said he deserved the start. And he repays our faith in him straight away. One thing I will say, ultimate difficulty has changed. On past FIFA, if you're thinking already, this isn't an ultimate, it is. On past FIFAs, what it used to do is just put every opposition player 99 all over the park. So whoever you were playing, 99. But I'm hoping this year they've adapted it to the point where it varies by opponent. My God. Here comes Matty Cash. Going to knock it this way. Touch. Matty Target could get in on the act. Matty Target. Oh, what a save. We're dominating. We are dominating. Oh, nice little cutscene here. Look at this. Douglas Louise taking the corner. And we put it on the head of someone in the mix. of concerts up there. I don't know what's going on. I genuinely have no idea what's going on. I have never started a career mode like this in my life. In my life. It's a head scratcher. It's 3 0 Villa. It is three. Watford had all the early chance. Well, they pinned us back for the first 10 minutes. What a header. What a header. Let's see it from this angle. Just gets up above everyone. It's Musa Sissoko. I don't know who the other player challenging is, but Ben Foster's got to do better. That's very central. Is this broken? Is this game broken? In the past, no, nah, I'm not having it. I've just smashed it from so far away. I've... I don't know what to say. Look at that. What for in possession? You can tell it's on a high difficulty. Look how quickly they move the ball. Oh, God. Should have put a slide in there. Concert coming across. Oh, my God, he's done me. Ball into the near post. Get a block on it, lads. There's just goals flying in left, right and centre. It's 4-1. What? Um, we can't go on like this, guys. We can't go on like this. It's a lifeline for Watford. Saar doing me in. Where was the mark in here? We tried to get a little block on it. Mings tried to put a toe on it. Didn't happen. I'll be interested to see... How we get on against tougher opposition. I must say, that's a good tackle. Here we go. Boys in midfield, where are you? Oh, my God. There's a man in the middle, free. Get in there, Douglas. Recovering midfielder, man. Do your job. Oh, I've dangled a leg. Could have been a pen. Watford flying at us again. Don't you dare. I mean, I don't know what this is. Six goals in the opening 40 minutes. Of the season. Not even of just this game. The season. It's Hernandez. This is going to finish like 9-7. The, the skill. The footwork. It's crazy. Danny Ings. Are they going to track his run? Oh, it's Leon Bailey. They have tracked his run this time. Right. Watford have like got a foothold on this game now after that mental start. I mean, they are moving the ball very, very quickly indeed now. Get out wide to him. Target, win that. Well played. And just settle this game down a bit. He says, booting the ball up in the air. Here we go. Bailey, just keep possession for a sec. Thank you. Ings, though. Ah, oh, why did I even pass that? Half-time whistle approaching. I mean, anyone that's paid for a ticket, you've got your money's worth. I literally thought the game was broken for the opening 20 minutes or so. Especially when that Leon Bailey rocket made it 4-0. I was literally speechless. But ref's going to blow. Ref is Mike Dean, apparently, but he's got hair. Bailey, I tell you what. Surely not 5-2. Leon Bailey. 
Seven first half goals, ladies and gentlemen. Seven first half goals. Two for this man on his debut. They just didn't they just didn't track the run. They just didn't track the run. It's a hell of a finish. Ben Foster having a torrid time. Half time whistle goes. Watford two. Aston Villa five. Wow. Never a dull moment. This is just 100 mile an hour, this game. Every aspect. Defending. I don't like it. I don't like it. Just everyone be calm. Here we go. Go on, Matty. Take on Danny Wright. Look at the space. Oh, what a driven pass that is. Target. Oh, that was supposed to be for Ings. Who's there now? John McGinn. Finesse OP. Ooh, finesse shot OP, he said. Watford coming forward. If they score early in the second half... They might be in with a shout of getting something. I tell you what, if I let a 5-2 five, five, lead slip, I don't deserve the win. What a block! Nearly an OG! Oh, my God. What? Shambolic defending, really. Get a foot in there. Get a foot in there. Get a... Well done. And again, Mingzi. Where are you? That's it. Get out. Get on the weights. Goal kick. Thank you. Whew. Going to be making our first changes of the season. Leon Bailey, who's had a phenomenal game. Denying him a hat-trick here, taking him off. That's a bit silly. But Ollie Watkins and Buendia coming on. They're both going to play out wide. Both the wide men coming off for a bit of a breather. They've done their jobs. Both had good games. Both got on the score sheet as well, to be fair. Konsa changed the flight of the ball on long passes. And it's so satisfying. Here's target. Why aren't they closing me down? Ramsey. Ramsey, cut it back. Danny Ings, no, it's behind him. Oh, first touch for Buendia. That could have been a dream start to his Norwich career. Norwich? Villa. I don't want to know who's coming up next. I want to get through this bad boy. Oh, what a pass that is. Matty Cash. He's calmer than I am. Oh, oh Mings. Been out muscled. Don't say that very often. Martinez. Good goalkeeping. That was a chance for Watford. And again, we just look to take the uh, take the pace out of the game. Why is there a man over at the back? Konsa. Mings. Mings. Brilliant once again, Tyrone Mings. And in trying to prevent the corner, he's given the ball back to Watford, I think. Although Ollie Watkins, brilliant helping out there and will clear it. There's a man on the far side. That is the worst possible switch of play ever and Watford are just throwing numbers forward now it's four on two concert and Mings you've got jobs to do boys Tyro Mings cross comes in at the back good save Martinez and Matty Cash clear it please my word Watford could easily have got something from this game you know and we could actually make it six if we switch that switch it nice and early Ollie Watkins coming in unselfish from Watkins what a save Brilliant play from the lads. John McGinn. Oh, another good save. Oh, and breathe. We're going to get all three points here. Barring an absolute collapse. 5-2. Five, five minutes left. Second, I don't, I don't know what that first half was all about. I really don't. Watford have been good in the second half. We've caught them on the break a few, uh, a few times. But they're obviously popping bodies forward. Trying to get something out of the game. And we're, we look knackered. We look absolutely shattered. Oh, they're not piling bodies forward at the rate that they were a minute ago. Maybe even they know the game's gone. We look threatening on the break. Here's a ball. Look at Ollie Watkins' run. Look at Ollie Watkins' run. It's two on two. Buendia is arriving. If we square it, Buendia! I don't want to see a replay of that. Just blow the whistle. We've already seen a goal of the season contender from Leon Bailey. Man of the match performance from him, even though he come off with about 25 minutes to go. Home fans booing, Villa fans look on in disbelief. But a brilliant start to the season for the boys. So this looks good, doesn't it? We're only one game in, of course. Crazy game it was, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Aston Villa, top of the league. Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, Burnley picking up a win. It's exciting, isn't it? What we got down there? Liverpool only managing a draw in their opening game. Man City haven't played yet. Okay, I was gonna say they lost, they're on no points, but they haven't played yet. Watford, of course, bottom leads. Wolves ever and that's where I'm going to end it guys we do have episodes of these coming every single day at least that is the plan so thank you very much for watching again can't explain what happened in that opening game it's definitely on ultimate difficulty I can show you because I know there'll be doubters and I hate the fact that there's doubters 
check it out there it is on ultimate straight into the menu but yeah it is what it is guys Aston Villa career mode long and successful one hopefully let me know who you think we should sign follow me on Twitter and Twitch and all the jazz down below thanks for watching I'll see you next time